There's a need, a very strong need, to get more black folk involved as makers and not just users of crypto. You guys know something that 99% of us don't know, ain't talking about, haven't even fathomed yet. That's how early it is, and that's how special it is, and that's how responsible it is for you to do something with what you know. Whether you participate or not, tell somebody. Mm -hmm. calling it blockchain and black liberation and I just wanted to uh, I put a lot of quotes out just to verify and confirm and support some of the things that the research that I've been finding and uh, this was something that was said in 1999 uh, Professor Milton Friedman had said that I think the internet is going to be one of the most major the major forces for reducing the role of government the one thing that's missing but that will soon be developed is a reliable e-cash and then nine years later, we have the birth of Bitcoin. Now we're gonna get into what Bitcoin is, but before we get into that, I wanna talk about some other things that I kinda of wanna massage our minds to be open to receiving this kind of information. So if you have a pen and paper, I just wanna do this little quick exercise. Um, and if you don't, maybe we could share. I have some paper here. It's painless. I have a pen, I need paper. <laughs> I mean, I know, right? We're in the digital age, people use their phones for notes. I was going to use my phone. Yeah, you can. Okay. Oh, well, actually, not in this I'll exercise, but. I'll take okay, you take some paper. Okay. okay. And pardon me, I know you guys didn't come here for class, but this is going to be a little bit No, class. this is class. This is about learning. Okay. Anybody else some paper? Anybody else need some paper? Okay. 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 So. What a, this is good. This is about a, this is a thinking exercise. And the first thing I like for you to do is draw this diagram. It's three by three dots. Okay, three dots over three rows of three dots. Looks like a Rubik's cube or a tetragrammaton. And the exercise is for you to take your pen or pencil, and four strokes, you have to try to connect each of these dots. But you cannot lift the pen or pencil off the paper. So it has to be four consecutive strokes, and you can only cross a line once, okay? Four consecutive strokes to connect all these dots, but it can only cross or intersect the line one time. So once you put the pen down, after your four strokes is when you can pick the pen up. So I'll just give you about 30 seconds to start, get a couple of attempts on it. So, Okay, so you draw the three by threes right. using your pen. You want to do four consecutive, any kind. You're trying to connect all these dots with only oh, four all strokes, all of them. So I'm making three rows like this, right? Three, three, uh huh. No, you do exactly like this. You see? I got my pointer. Um, three, three, just like that. Yes, okay, I couldn't see it. Okay, yes. And then you want to take a pen or pencil and connect all those dots with only four lines. Only four oh. lines, and the lines can only cross each other one time. One time. So you gotta try to make four lines within this paradigm. To connect all of those dots. Oh, okay. Okay? 
And don't get disgruntled if you don't get it, because I didn't know it first either. So there's always a learning curve. It's going to take about 30 seconds more to try. And then as I'm talking, you can continue to, to try doing it. Sure. You can cheat. <laughs> but you can't lift the pen off the paper. It has to be four consecutive strokes to connect all of them. OK? So if you do more than four strokes, it's wrong. If you take the pen off the paper before you finish the four stroke, it's wrong. OK? So I'm going to move on. Keep doing what you're doing. You can, we're multifaceted. We can listen and write and think at the same time. All right? So what are people saying about Bitcoin? Some people are saying that Bitcoin will do the banks what email did to the postal industry. Think about that. Right? You don't have to, what, how, remember I used to get birthday cards in the mail? Now people send e-birthday cards. Saves you the, the, the cost of a stamp, the waiting, and it also goes, you know, immediately there. But you have to be hooked up, you have to be hooked up to the, to the internet. Of course. Whereas before, remember back in the day, it was a dial-up. You had that AOL that took all that time, used your phone to dial-up. You couldn't be on the phone and on the internet at the same time. And then we went to DSL cable. And now, you, now you're on, on the internet all the time. You don't even have to dial in anymore. Your phone is on the internet. It's part of a connection of the network. So it's that, become where it became first, you know, only a select few could do it. Now it's on all the time. But, but that required you being, that's, that's, a, that's a paid service for uh, Not really. Because you, if you get Wi-Fi, you can get on somebody's Wi-Fi and use the internet. People have phones and they don't have a bill. They get on somebody's Wi-Fi and they make phone calls. Mm -hmm. They do video calls, they do internet searching, they do whatever. You don't have to have an internet uh, provider, but if you find someone that does and you get into their Wi-Fi, you can use that for free. People Library, do that. Libraries. Libraries, exactly. But we're not Somebody's gonna, still paying. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. But the bottom line is that, in this case, the post office is no longer the one that makes all the money. Mm -hmm. they leave, they're losing money, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, let me just move on to the next one. Gold is a great way to preserve wealth. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to move around because it's mm -hmm. too heavy. Mm -hmm. you, need, you do need some kind of alternate, and Bitcoin fits the bill. This is Jim Rickards. Um, he's an e economics and uh, you also economics can't, and you also investment. Can't make change. He can, mm -hmm. exactly. exactly. Um, and then one of the quotes I kind of came up with is where the internet revolutionized the world of information, cryptocurrency is the internet of money. And after we keep talking and keep hearing what I'm saying, it'll, it'll start to resonate. But I, I want to challenge you. And you guys know Anthony Browder. That's yeah. my Jagna. Yeah. And his thing about the three kind of thinkers is what I always try to start a talk with is decide what kind of thinker you are. Because you have that literal thinker that whatever I tell you today, you're just going to go home and believe what I'm saying. You're not going to do any diligence. I'll tell you the sky is pink. And you're going to go say, yeah, the sky is pink. Why? Because it's whatever they say it is. Mm. OK? A lot of us are literal thinkers, unfortunately. Mm. Then you have the influential thinker that is not totally sold on it, but not to the point where they feel like they can be the evaluated thinker who is one that will go and find out for themselves. They will come back, not afraid to come back, the person that's supposedly authority of this thought, okay? That's what I'm hoping that we are or going to, is to be that evaluated thinker. So even the things that I tell you today, if it doesn't resonate with you, you have every right to go and find out the truth for yourself, and also you can challenge me. I, I welcome it, because I might learn as well. I might be wrong, I don't know everything, okay? So let's go back to this exercise. How you guys doing? You, you got okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else think they got it? Okay. You wanna you wanna show? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Yeah. How should I show? Uh, why don't you stand up? You got the you got it written down. So let, let me see it first. Let me see it. Let me see. It. Ooh, you're the first guy. Come on. Come on. This is my first one. Come on. Let me see. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Don't. Let's keep that. Let's keep that. This is the first. Of all the lectures I've ever done, this is the first guy, first brother, person Come on. that ever got it right. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. All right. Come on. Again, your name again, brother? Imani. 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 Yeah, yeah. Let me show you how I did it. Faith. No, I want to do it. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them. Oh, you want to Anybody else think they got it? Anybody else think they got it? No? I got Okay. Anybody want to? Okay, I'm looking. Close. Close. But close, but that was five. That was five strokes. Okay, so I'm gonna show you it. Okay. Brother Monty's showing me how. 
<laughs> no, I'm supplementing. I'm enhancing right. you. I'm there enhancing you go. You. So imagine, right, before you saw these nine dots and you automatically thought of this border. You saw this square border and you only thought inside. You were programmed, and this is, we're all programmed to think of these illusions. These things are put out automatically and we follow suit. So we thought, there's a border, I can't do anything outside of that. But you can. You can. See the squares? I started outside the border, came down here. Went past the dot. That's the second line. This is the third line. Came outside the box, so the third line, and then came down for the fourth line. Crossed only once. Okay? The reason why I'm showing you this, because this is, a, this is to me like uh, symbolic of the way we think in life. We're told to think, we can only think inside here. Whatever they give us is what we're supposed to get. We're breaking that right now. Okay? We're going to think outside the border. We're going to think differently, because this is how we reclaim our independence in our creativity is when we think outside the border of what society wants us to think. They're trying to program us to think a certain kind of way and accept certain kinds of information. We're gonna break all that right now. And the talk tonight is about doing that exactly, okay? So, before we continue, again, challenge yourself to at least eliminate this. At some point in your life in the very near future as in the next hour, hour and a half. It's the literal thinker, the one that accepts whatever I tell you, okay? And at least consider being influential, but eventually graduating to that evaluative thinker, meaning that you are capable of at least picking up your computer and going to Google or going to the library and doing some research to verify if what some, someone told you is true or not, okay? This information I'm about to show you is public. Anybody can get it. You just got to dig. You just got to research. Put in the time. Okay. So, Financial Literacy 101. I want to talk to you about how I got into this space. Um, for 12 years, I worked for the NBA, the National Basketball Association, as a brand identity marketing strategic analyst. And I was learning about, you know, how to govern, you know, promoting for, bas for the basketball teams and players and all this kind of stuff. And I learned how dirty the business is in professional sports, how we get treated, yeah, they give us money, but they don't give us financial literacy. Mm -hmm. So many of us are in the league for two or three years, and within the second year, we're broke. Mm -hmm. So they don't, and that's a revolving door. They're doing nothing to try to change that or try to uh, educate them on how to value money, okay? But regardless of that, um, the ancestors works in a funny kind of way. Uh, I had invested in cryptocurrency in March of 2016, not knowing what it was. Mm -hmm. But I did it because my boy told me to do it. And I just did it and walked away. Because I'm, I'm working 24-7 on the road. I, I don't have time to pick up a whole new skill. Uh, but then came that day when my job decided to lay me off. Because, well, they found out what I'm about. They found out my social media page and saw that I was really like Pan-African. Mm -hmm. They already knew, they always knew that. But mm -hmm. I guess this is their excuse now. Because jobs now are like, you know, when you have a job, they look at your social media page. Mm -hmm. And then they can make a determination if they want to keep you or not. Like, really, you shouldn't be able to get laid off for that. But, you know, I didn't look at it like that. I didn't want to fight the NBA for my job back. Mm -hmm. I figured this is the ancestor saying, get out mm -hmm. and do what you're supposed to do, what you're exactly. really supposed to do. Exactly. So that's what I did. So when I came out, the first thing I was doing, I was scared. OK, how am I going to pay to live? How am I going to help to sustain my family? And Cryptocurrency just dropped in my lap. And I said, well, this is intimidating because I don't know anything about it. I just know that I put a couple hundred dollars in it and it's looking okay, but I, have no, I don't know anything about it. But I started to go through the process of using money I had already garnished or, or, or um, raised through working, my 401k. Mm -hmm. So this is where the education started happening. I met with my financial advisor and he just happened to be and alone, we went to the same university, so he felt like he could divulge some information to me that he usually wouldn't tell people. First thing I learned, and you may know this, but I didn't, and for those that don't know, it's okay, because now you'll know. I didn't know that recessions were planned. I didn't know that they were planned every 10 to 12 years. The last recession we had was in what? 08? Right? It's 2000. Every eight to 10 years. Now here's the thing. The way recessions work is globally linked. 
So if it's a recession on this part of the world, the other side it isn't. Okay? And it's four quarters, just like a game. So you move into four different phases till you get to the recession. And the recession is supposed to last anywhere between two to four months, six max. Now, the last one lasts pretty long. So I don't know how they're estimating, what they're, I guess they're averaging it out. But as of now, if you look up Venezuela, their government is destitute. Their government has no money, right? They have no way to function. Guess what they're doing to run their government? They're tapping into their civilians' savings accounts and pulling out their money to run the government. And they can't do anything about it. Now, mind you, if it happens there, it can happen anywhere. Okay, because think about it. Where are your money at? It's in their banks. Do you have a key? No. You got a PIN number, but you don't have a key to go in whenever you want to and pull out actual, like if you had a million dollars, you can't pull out a million. What do they say? It's going to take a minute to get the money to get it to you because they don't have it. Why? Because they already lended it out to something else, to some other project that benefits them. We'll get into that in a second. So, during the recession, I personally lost $225,000 in my 401k. Wow. At the time, I was in my early 30s, so I was like, I was pissed, but I was like, all right, I'm still in the work field. I just have to get it back. I have to double up on my 401k contribution and try to get the money back. Still not even knowing that game, but I figured I have time. But then I thought about, well, what if I was 60? What if I was 70? What if I was you know, an elder, a senior, and I was living off of my retirement funds and it got tapped and it wasn't replenished? The government didn't give the money back. They didn't say, or oh, sorry, here's your money back. They just say, hey, that's, it happens. You got a deal. So if you're an elder and you're living off of Medicaid and you have to pay your mortgage and that is suddenly depleted, your ass out. A lot of people died. A lot of people starved. A lot of people had to go back to work. And what kind of jobs do we have <laughs> to go back to work to? So these are very real issues that a lot of people face and still facing today because we're all into this fiat currency. Uh, the, the entire is based that the retirement and savings options for the nation lost about $2.4 trillion that they did not put back. Okay? Um, so basically, I learned at that point, okay, this is a scam. Fiat currency isn't really real. Social Security might not be here when I turn 65. My 401k, most people use their 401ks uh, when they retire. Well, what if you retire and it's not there? Mm -hmm. Did you know you could use your 401k while you're still working? You do get taxed five times, but you can still use it. So I had that option. I decided that I wanted to pull out my money at that point, and some, not, some, not all of it, but some of it, to handle my next few months of living mm -hmm. and think about investing. So one of the things that the, my, my uh, advisor also told me was that um, he told me, well, I was filling out my 401k application uh, it puts down occupation. What do you, I mean, my application, it says, what do you put down as your occupation? I said, well, bro, I just got laid off. I can't put down that, that down as an occupation. He said, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Why don't you put down there that you live off of your savings and investments? Now, you're probably looking at me like, what does that mean? And that's what I was at first. Then the light came on. Boom. This is how white boys live. They live off of their savings and investments. See, we're conditioned to think that in order for us to be validated to have a, 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 to earn money, we have to work for somebody. Someone has to validate our ability to earn. So we're used to saying, I gotta work for Target, I work for whoever else, for somebody else. Not, I'm self-employed, I'm an entrepreneur, and I live off my savings and investments. This is what white boys do. So I realize now, this dude's messing up. He's telling me too much. I'm about to bring this back to the hood. Right? So, financial literacy is not a topic of conversation in our communities. Traditionally, it's not a topic at the dinner table. We don't talk about that. It's not coincidental. And like I said, you can look at this stuff here, the stats here. Seniors having to go back to work. The earnings and employment in the 1990s for seniors was 18.4%. A lot of it was their investments. It's 31% in 2010. It's probably closer to 40% now. So that means they had to go back to work. Or if they didn't go back to work, couldn't get a job, that means that they're, you know, poor. 
extremely poor now, probably lost their homes, which is what allowed the driving of gentrification to come in. That's why a lot of elders have sold their homes because they wanted to cash out and live somewhere else that was less expensive. But in, the, in essence, that one is gonna get dried up too. Okay, so here's the, this is this, this, this type of cyclical, aggressive uh, nature of business that is ran by global white supremacy and we're always getting the short end of the stick. Okay? Yes, sir. I want to play this clip for you first, but, and I don't know this guy's name. I'm still looking for this guy's, na this guy's name, but he said something that was really profound. And I just want to read it to you. He said, our greatest power over blacks is that we control everything they believe. Mm -hmm. We control their education, their news, media, their entertainment, and all their statistics, and even their image of themselves. Mm -hmm. This, therefore, allows us to inundate blacks with disinformation mm -hmm. designed to instill the myth of white superiority and black self-hatred into their minds. It's all psychological. Um, but here's the thing. This is how the world sees us. Our collective wealth, we are 99% consumer, 1% producer. Mm -hmm. That's a statistic that has not changed over the last, since emancipation. No, I'll say since integration, post-integration, we have been 99% because integration, the segregation, we did for ourselves because we had to because nobody else would do for us. So we did for ourselves. The dollar circulates in our community, as you probably know, in six hours, whereas the Asian community is about a month. Okay? That's not coincidental. It's systematically put in place. So I want to play this quick clip for you because this guy in the realms of marketing is something that I think is something we should be aware of. He uh, asked me to kind of quickly uh, talk about my purpose here for uh, this. Well, what is the purpose of uh, running the biggest, best minority network in technology? Um, you know, is it like philanthropic? Are you trying to give back? Are you trying to help people? And the answer is no, absolutely not. Um, my purpose, as those of you who were last time know, is I'm going to make a billion dollars. <laughs> and that's why you are all here. <laughs> but once you go into the consumer business, then all of the sun, um, how do consumers make decisions? Well, they make decisions based on their culture. They make decisions based on, you know, where they come from, what they're going to listen to, what they're going to buy, what they're going to do. It's all based in who they are. Um, and if any of you have been, and many of you have been, as I have, around the world, what you find is that culture worldwide, the dominant culture, emanates from the United States. So if you go anywhere in the world, you'll hear music from here, you'll see fashion from here, you'll see a lot of things that you say, wow, I know where that came from. Um, and then if you go back and you say, well, where did the culture in the United States come from? Like, it's predominantly from black people. Right, who invented jazz, who invented rock and roll, who invented blues, who invented hip hop, who invented most of the fashion. And so when you think about like, how are you gonna drive culture? How are you gonna sell technology products to consumers? Uh, there's a big opportunity, a big untapped opportunity. And I'm gonna tap it and get <laughs> a billion dollars. This is the mentality of the European in all facets. You guys know about the nine areas of people activity. Right? The nine areas of people activity, Francis Cross Welsing and Dr. Neely Fuller talked about. I'll show you in a second. Yeah, but I'm good with both of them. Yeah. these areas is are areas that global white supremacy used to run their trillion gazillion dollar industries from. And they understand that all they have to do is appeal to black people. They'll because we're frivolous buyers. We have no loyalty because we don't have any businesses. And of the businesses we have, they're small mom and pop shops because we don't support them. And also we get in the wrong kind of businesses. But the point I'm making here is that there is an industry, there's an opportunity, there's conversations that we're not privy to. Now this guy, um, uh, Horowitz, he is a head of one of the largest advertising firms in, in the world. And the audience he was talking to was black people. He was telling black people, I'm here to tap you and make a billion dollars off of you. And you're here because you want part of that. You want the table scraps. These are the house people he's talking to. These are the agents he's using to put into this play that's making all these designs and ads that are making people, uh, making our culture look so beautiful, but they're the ones that's benefiting from it. Okay? Excuse so, me, do they show the audience on here? I have the long video, yes. They okay. do. And you, you selling that one? The, it's on YouTube. 
this stuff is public. This not. I can send you the link. Okay. Yes. Or I have a sign-in sheet at the end, and you and we'll communicate from there. Um, but here's the thing: the world is changing fast, <laughs> but we're still last. Okay. How do we fix? Well, hold hold tight. Cause I know, I know, I'm feeling you. I, listen, I'm, I'm like, yo, let's go. You know, and that's what we're about to do. That's what we're about to do. I want to, oh, but I want to, please, I want to hold any comments or questions to the end, cause there's a lot of information I want to give it to you. Okay. All right. So, the world of money. Um, the money basically, when you think about, that's what that's what gets everybody's attention is money. You can talk about culture, you can talk about spirituality, God, whatever. Money gets people's attention, right? And it's not a coincidence when it comes to the circulation of money, how it's targeted to certain demographics that they make the most money from. Now, when you think about global currency, places that get taxed the most to send money to yeah. is in Africa. In Africa, they pay the highest remittance fees in the world. Western Union, PayPal, any kind of banking transaction. If it goes to Africa, you're paying anywhere between double to triple, even 10 times more than what you would if you sent it to Europe if you send it to some other part of the world, okay? Um, beforehand, before you had a bank to bank account in Western Union and third party charges, global money transfers and banks are overcharging Africans on purpose. Mm -hmm. On purpose, this is another form of slavery, mm -hmm. economic slavery, okay? Cryptocurrency, however, as what I will tell you about soon, offers sovereignty, I'll show you in a second. The world of finance is changing. It's changing before our eyes. This recession, this global recession, as I talked about in Venezuela, um, Venezuela's economy that spiraled down towards a collapse. They're running out of food. Hospitals are overcrowded. They don't have enough medicine. And they have no way to run the government other than to tap the civilians' savings accounts and pull in that money. And they're not going to put it back. Okay? A change is needed, and a change is here. If you're here, and you and you, women, if you are here, and for the past, if you are here in the past thirty, and past thirty, I'm sorry, and you're past thirty, can't remember right. Um, you're past thirty, then you're doing something good. You know how to invest in something. You've invested in your health because you're here. You've invested in your sanity, right? Because you ain't lost it yet. But a lot of people are losing it. You've invested in some sort of morals where you feel like I'm going to get up and I want to learn, I want to do something. You're here today, which shows that you're good at investing in time to better yourself. Okay, so we know how to invest on some things. Mm -hmm. Let's invest in some new things. Okay, let's shift it to do something else. What is currency first though? Because again, there's a financial literacy learning curve that we're not taught. Mm -hmm. Currency is a sustenance, it's, it's a form of sustenance. Think about animals and insects, what do they do? Th think of like an ant. A colony of ants. The first thing in the morning, what do they do? They get up, yawn, go to work. They got to go find food. They spend the whole day finding food. They find the food, they bring it back, and at the night they eat. The next morning, what do they do? They get up, go find food, and bring it back, and they eat. And that's the sick. That's their whole life. They don't go to the club. You know, they don't go to the concert. This is what, or maybe they did. We don't know. But this is what their basic life is like. Ours is similar. It's the same thing only. Our hustle is not necessarily food, our hustle is currency. Mm -hmm. We get up in the morning to do what? We gotta go get money. Get money. Mm -hmm. And we spend all day trying to get money. And then we bring the money home, we use the money to do the other things that we need to do. But the next day we're getting up to go get money. This is the pattern that we have to follow and most people do it until they're dead tired. Mm -hmm. And by the time they do retire, they either have not enough money or they're too tired to do anything with the rest of their lives. That's why in their 40s they have a, a uh, what is called the, uh, the midlife crisis mm -hmm. because they feel like, I've been doing this and I, I, haven't, fulfilled, I haven't lived life yet. Well, this cyclical, it's like a cyclical, it's the sheep going down the same path to the slaughterhouse. Mm -hmm. Okay? We can break that if you have wealth. Mm -hmm. Okay? You need to know how to make wealth and make wealth make wealth. Okay? So, I, <laughs> I like to put little quotes up here. So, you guys know about Wu-Tang. And the song Cream, right? Cash moves everything around me. Now it's crypto moves everything around me because what's happening yeah. now, you're gonna find, it's gonna make you think, I think crypto every day, all day. Because I, not because I'm money hungry, but because it's a form of liberation. I can do the things I wanna do now. I don't have to answer to nobody. <coughs> Cryptocurrency is a 
monetary shift. It's a great monetary shift. Um, you'll start to hear more about cryptocurrency. Mostly you're gonna hear about Bitcoin, right? Everybody's heard of Bitcoin? Yeah. Who hasn't? Okay, good. Anybody? Don't be shy. So you release, so that's good because I, I'll say out of 15, 20 people here, uh, I'd say 80% have heard about Bitcoin. Now you might not know what it is, but you heard the word, right? Last year, probably none of you would have heard it. So it's starting to grow. It's starting to grow. And just so you know too, that coin is a symbol. It's not actually, a, cryptocurrency is not, you can't taste, touch, smell, it's digital, okay? Um, but people, those are nice symbols to show, and maybe one day they will put value on it. Who knows? I don't know. The production, who knows? Uh, but the point is, is that there's a new way to earn residuals. Okay? Um, it allows creative financial planning, planning opposed to living paycheck to paycheck, which is what the majority of us do. Thank you. Um, because eventually, you're going to lose your job or you'll get laid off, I mean, or you'll, or you'll retire. But you can't work forever, meaning the person that pays you money to live, eventually there's gonna be an expiration date. Unless you got a crazy hookup where you're gonna get paid indefinitely, which is the minority of us, and probably none of us. <laughs> but the point is, is that the job you have now, as secure as you may feel it is, one day that job will be over. What are you gonna do with the rest of your life? Because bills are gonna still come every 30 days, okay? <clears throat> the fact is, it's not widely talked about in social media. The fact that this room is impact is a good thing because that's letting you know it's still early. We're still early. People ain't talking about it yet. You're not seeing it on the streets yet, but you will very soon. And I don't want you to be that person who's gonna kick yourself in the butt because you didn't do anything when you first heard about it, okay? <laughs> this thing isn't even 10 years old yet. It's very early. So the world today is changing very, very fast. There's no need, I'm sorry, there's a need for more Powatis. And when I say Powatis, that's my terminology for pre people of African descent in the United States because not everybody is, was born in America. Some of us were born in the Caribbean. Some of us came from Africa or you know, other parts of the world and are living in the United States. So rather than to, to segregate us anymore, you know, because even when you're doing the voting, they put African American. What if you're not from America? What do you put? The other, well, what's other? So I came with a terminology of people of African descent in the United States. You don't have to use it, but if you do, I'd love you to use it because it collects, collectively involves all of us in the United States, okay? Um, but there's a need for us to get involved as makers, as producers, and ingenuit, ingenuitive innovators of this opportunity. We need to be doing classes and teaching each other how to take advantage of this opportunity. Okay, so hopefully this is a start. Uh, cryptocurrency enables us to figure out how we can use this to solve our problems financially and individually and communally. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is take care of yourself. The next thing I wanna do is, well, how, if, you, if you're taken care of, then you're gonna help the next person. So that's the goal, is to get it to a point where you feel comfortable enough that this works for me, it's definitely gonna work for them, it's definitely gonna work for my neighbors, it's definitely gonna work for our community and then we can have some say-so in our life, in our, the path that we're going, especially for those coming after us, okay? Uh, Sinclair Skinner, the brother that you should look up, came out with this coin called Bitmari. And he said that we need a magnitudinal change, not incremental change, meaning this has to be something, it needs to be an explosion of this type of sharing of information and movement on that information. Because true knowledge and comprehension of knowledge is nothing if you're not doing nothing with it. Okay, you can sit up here and say you read all those books, but if you ain't living that, then the books don't mean nothing. Okay. So what is cryptocurrency? Like finally, what is cryptocurrency? Right. <laughs> cryptocurrency is it's a digital global trade, peer to peer. What peer to peer means is me to you to you to you to we're all connected, and we validate the the viability of this coin. Okay. Um, there's no, it's, it's decentralized. So what is centralized? Centralized is fiat currency, meaning that the U.S. government and the banking systems are the ones that controls the money. They dictate the flow of the money, the value of the money. They uh, have books on uh, transactions of the money that you can't see, that only share with themselves. When there's opportunities that arise in the community, they're the ones that are privy to these opportunities, not the community, it's not public. It's decentralized. 
cryptocurrency is decentralized, meaning that it is open to the world, public, peer-to-peer. -peer. Anybody can get this information. Anybody can participate. Okay? You don't have to be part of an organization. You could be an individual and be part of this investment. Um, all transactions are verified through a public ledger, which means, as in the bank, if you go to the bank and say, yo, Wells Fargo, I want to see your book. They're like, no, I can't show you my book. Who are you? Well, I put, I got $1,000 in invested in your, in your bank. And you have no say. You're not, a, you're not a share, you may be a shareholder, but you're not a partner, so you don't have privy to that information. Mm -hmm. But cryptocurrency, there's a public ledger where every individual on this planet can see every transaction that ever happens on what's called the blockchain. Mm -hmm. The blockchain is this ledger of every type of transaction. If someone bought something with a Bitcoin, it's written in this ledger. There's a, a level of anonymity that cryptocurrency offers, meaning you don't have to use your name. You are assigned an algorithmic code. So it's not going to say if Boy Shani bought $20 worth of Bitcoin at this place. It's going to have my number. Okay? That gives you anonymity so the government can't trace and tax you. So here's the thing, now people think, oh shoot, we need to pay taxes, right? Isn't that illegal? Good. Right? They, they put that in our head that we're supposed to, if you don't pay taxes, you're going to jail. Cryptocurrency, you have to do the research about Bitcoin. Again, it's only nine years, uh, eight, nine years old. The first few years, it went through and answered, addressed all those issues. They went to the highest courts in the world. And the world governments have said it is a legitimate currency. Mm. Wow. And the governments cannot put their hands on it. They're still trying, mm -hmm. but they cannot and have yet to put their hands on it. Excuse me, I just wanted to say, I did see on Facebook, it's true that Trump said he wants to get rid of Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk. I got some things about that. So cryptocurrency, our digital currency is exchange. It's the, the thing about what cryptocurrency is, makes it of value is also like stock. Okay? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. But right now, the global market is roughly at $170 billion worth of cryptocurrency that's out in space. That's a growth of $5.5 billion a month. So it's, it's still early. You think $170 billion is a lot of money, but it really isn't. You really think about it, it really isn't a lot of money. Um, the total, the tally of the fiat currency circulating um, in banks, what is fiat currency and why is it what it is? The way fiat currency is, and this is, this is the pros and the cons of the vote. So, Fiat currency is money that they just continue to print, backed by nothing, right? It used to be, it used to be backed by gold. It's not backed by anything right now, but they're still printing it, still printing it. So where are they making their money from? The inflation, the 2% inflation, that's where they make their money because they know this dollar bill is worth nothing. It's just that the government and businesses are still convincing you that this dollar has meaning and it has worth, okay? Cryptocurrency, though, has value like stock. Meaning that if a certain current coin, like a Bitcoin or an altcoin, Bitcoin is the, the granddad. That's the first one. But then you have thousands of other coins on the market, and they're called altcoins or alternative coins. And if you get into any Bitcoin or altcoin, and if its value today is $10, and tomorrow it's $20, so is the value you have of that amount. It grows and also dips like the stock market. Okay? Cryptocurrency, I'll give you an example of Bitcoin. Last year, this time, it fluctuated in, in, anywhere between $700 to $1,200 a year ago, today. Now it tapped, it's, it's, it hit $6,100 uh, with over two weeks, about two weeks ago. And now it's in the 57, 58 range. They're projecting it to be in the 16,000, 18,000 uh, next year, this time. Three times its value. Okay? Brother Lewis, I don't want to stop your flow, but I want to add to it here because I think it's key. Also, last year, at this point in time, the whole marketplace for Bitcoin, you said it was 170 billion, mm -hmm. it was 17 billion. Yes, I have that stat, I'm gonna show you, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's 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 how fast it's growing, that's what I'm gonna show you. That's, I love it, because look, I'm a nerd now. <laughs> I'm into numbers, and I'm like, all I need is some glasses and some tape. I'm like really doing this research and understanding what's happening here. So again, what is cryptocurrency? This is a stat that was put out last year that over 80% of the total global population is oblivious to what cryptocurrency is. That's how early it is. I would say now it may be 75%. It's growing though. 
people are starting to learn about it. But still, the majority of the world is in the dark about what it is. But they're starting to hear about it. Okay? So understand that. That it's not going to be in the dark too long. Okay? So we got to move. We got to position ourselves like everybody else is. We got to position ourselves. So, media. This is the other thing about cryptocurrency <coughs> versus fiat currency. Fiat currency is dictated by the media. Good morning, my golden retrievers. What kind of havoc shall the Carver Media Group create in the world today? News. Floods in Pakistan, riots in Paris, and a plane crash in California. Excellent. Mr. Jones, are we ready to release our new software? Yes, sir. As requested, it's full of bugs, which means people will be forced to upgrade for years. Outstanding. Mr. Wallace, call the president. Tell him if he doesn't sign the bill lowering the cable rates, we'll release the video of him with a cheerleader in the Chicago motel room. Inspired, sir. And after he signs the bill, release the tape anyway. Consider him slimed. Excuse me. He's on transponder seven. Mr. Stamper. Phase two is underway. I have the videotape. I haven't seen it myself, but I'm told the footage is excellent. Plus, there were 17 survivors for your headlines. Good work, Stamper. Gentlemen and ladies, hold the presses. This just in. By a curious quirk of fate, we have the perfect story with which to launch our satellite news network tonight. It seems a small crisis is brewing in the South China Seas. I want full newspaper coverage. I want magazine stories. I want books. I want films. I want TV. I want radio. I want us on the air 24 hours a day. This is our moment. And a billion people around this planet will watch it, hear it, and read about it from the Carver Media Group. There's no news like bad news. OK? The media, what was this? What, I can't remember what date this was. But in the spring, the Democrats started about impeaching 45, mm -hmm. right? As soon as he said that, the market went down 700 points. The media, no, uh, who owns the media? Who owns the media? Knight Rider, right? The Associated Press, right? Uh, what's the other one? Uh, like in terms of like while we're on the subject of media, do you think that media has like a part like like does it have like an influence in like the general election of like President Trump? Yeah, but we're not the, the, that's I understand that's a point, but I'm yeah, totally I, I'm totally that's a, a detour of what we should be doing. Cause I'm gonna tell you, I'll give just an example and then I'm gonna get back on tangent. Yeah. That's a good point, but listen, yeah. the Asian Americans, Asian Americans, where is their presence in the voting field? Do they have a candidate? Do they have a voting movement? No, what are they about? No, they about making that money. Right, Everybody right. else is thinking about, we need to vote a candidate. They don't they could give two shits about a candidate. They don't play that game. They play the money game. And that's why we're caught up in the web of thinking we need to put somebody in office that'll look for us. They never, they never will. Change the game. Change your mind. Think outside those borders. Do something different. OK? So, but I don't mind you bringing that up. Um, so. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So, let me move to the next one. So, let me talk about what Bitcoin is, because that's the granddaddy of all found in 2009 by Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, they, Nakamoto, they think that this is a person or it's a movement. They don't know which, and I don't care, okay? <laughs> a white paper came out, and they were talking about a currency that could be used that is decentralized, peer-to-peer, -peer. The government have, doesn't have any say and it's globally accepted and traded. Think about it. In Africa, there's over 50 million non-bankers. You can't do business with them because there's not a Wells Fargo over there. But you have a Western Union, so you get, you know, you pay that transaction fee, which is out the ass. But the point is, is that there is a monetary system put in place for a third party to make a whole lot of money. And they've been doing it for a long time. Cryptocurrency kicks that guy out the window. He's not there anymore. It's peer-to-peer -peer directly. I can now send somebody directly to somebody in Senegal. No taxes, no transaction fees, and they get it within minutes. Okay? Especially if you're a business or family. It, it, it benefits everybody. It benefits everybody. 
Uh, it's a digital currency. It's not something that you can hold, taste, touch, smell. It's nothing but digits. And that makes you think, well, is it really real? The dollar is nothing real. It's just a piece of paper. It's just that the government has convinced us to think that it has value. The reason why it has value is because they keep pushing it to you that it has value. So is cryptocurrency. People are starting to believe in cryptocurrency, so it's having value. That's why the stock is going up. All it takes is people to validate it and believe in it and use it. A person bought, I believe it was 2010, a person spent 10,000 bitcoins for one of the first purchases was 10,000 bitcoins to buy some pizza. To buy okay. pizza? To buy a, a large pizza in 2009 or 10. Now, 10,000, right, exactly, 10,000 bitcoins a day at, at 6,100 each, you pay. But it validated, the, someone said, you know what, I want a pizza, but I want to pay you in this. And that person said, okay, I'll accept it. That's how it happened. Mm. Just like how we use in Africa, we use cowrie shells. Mm. The first currency of trade. We decided that five cowrie shells is worth, you know, whatever we were trying to sell. Mm -hmm. So it's about peer-to-peer -peer deciding that this has value, and yes, we can barter and do business, okay? Um, again, it's accepted globally. Um, the market value, this is stats from the other day. Right now, with TAP 171 the highest so far, but right now, uh, as of last night, the market cap, market cap meaning all the coins together, what do they amount to? $169 billion. A year ago, on the 22nd, it was $13 billion. Not $169 billion a year later. You see that jump, that percentage jump? Imagine what it's going to be next year. And again, it averages $5.5 billion in growth daily. Why? Because people are starting to use it. People are starting to believe about it and invest in it. And people are making money and living off of it. And quitting their jobs and living their lives. Okay? Dubai will be the first ever, the first ever country to use currency, cryptocurrency. Uh, Trump, <laughs> this came out two weeks ago, he's considering replacing the social security system with the blockchain. Now how he's gonna do that, I, I don't see how he's gonna do it, it's gonna be a mess. Because if you're gonna, if you're gonna change a system, some people are gonna get cut off and let out, right? Because I'm supposed to be getting social security in a couple, no, not a couple years. <laughs> a couple more decades, you know. Um, so how are you going to pay me what I paid in? So I don't see how they're going to do it. They, they're going to try to figure it out. But the point is, they're trying to figure it out because they know that the current system is broken. Okay, it's decaying. Bitcoin banks uh, says that banks might soon conduct businesses entirely in crypto. Entirely. So when you go to Chase and you give them a check or cash or whatever, they're going to pay you in, and it won't be in your hand, it'll go to your digital wallet and cryptocurrency of your choice, because there's over thousands of them, okay? Uh, you probably can't read this, but I'm going to read this to you. Uh, nobody can't stop progress. Cryptocurrency is the future. Blockchain is a revolution, same as the internet in the 1990, year 1995, $10 to buy the domain, sorry, porn.com, right? <laughs> And you could become a millionaire by 2007. Okay, Facebook was 8.5 million sold in 2010. Again, porn.com, sorry, <laughs> was purchased for 9.5 million.com. These are domain names. You remember when URL, when the websites first came out? I should have bought every important person.com because they're gonna come to you and say, look, I want that. Okay, well I can name my price. A lot of people did that, and they made millions of dollars in that. They were thinking ahead. We were like, we were over here twerking. Well, twerking went in back there, but the point is we were doing something. <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, let me move on. It's globally accepted. Cryptocurrency is globally accepted. Hundreds of thousands of businesses accept Bitcoin, including Microsoft, Tiger Direct, Overstock, Dish Network. Uh, you know, Amazon just bought Whole Foods, yeah. so mm -hmm. eventually Whole Foods is going to say, if you want to pay in Bitcoin, Amazon is starting to come back. There's, a, there's supposed to be a press release going out this or next week about Amazon accepting Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Once that happens, it's over. Everybody going to be talking. That's what I'm saying. When a biz big business makes a move, you're going to be like, I know what's happening, and why am I not invested? I need to get myself in position to capitalize on the opportunity, okay? A guy uh, in 2013, you know Tesla, the electric car, 2013, 
spent a hundred thousand dollars worth, hundred thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, and bought a car. So that shows you it's real. It's not some made up, you know, fantasy thing. It, people are validating it. There are homes being bought in Miami and LA. They're accepting full crypto. Okay. Uh, Mark Cuban, who once was saying, don't, it's a bubble, it's BS, blah, blah, blah. On the low, he bought in, and now he's promoting it. He said, you should at least put in 10%. You have now uh, uh, trading firms. You have like F uh, Fidelity. They're now saying, look, you need to have a retirement crypto investment wallet, portfolio. You need to have that. Okay? They understand what's coming. The banks are trying to figure out how they can keep your loyal, keep your services, keep your money in their vaults. Because you're going to be pulling them out in a minute and you're going to be investing them in something else. But they're trying to find a way how they can at least get you to use some of their services in crypto. They're thinking about that right now, probably at this moment. Right now, while we're talking, they're talking. Understand that. Uh, I, I, please take your, because I got a lot to get through. So write it down and I promise I'll answer it, okay? Uh, JP Morgan. September 16th, a couple months, last month. This guy, Jamie, Di Jamie Dimon, or Diamond rather, he came out publicly and said that, look, if any of my employees bought Bitcoin, I would fire them. It is a bubble, it ain't real, it's not gonna last. Blah, blah, blah. That very night, JP Morgan bought all these shares of uh, cryptocurrency. Mm. Now, there was an uproar about it. Wait a minute, I thought, you know, bro, you just did an about face, mm. what's up? And people like talking about him. I said, no, 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 no. He ain't, he ain't the first to do this. This goes back to the Rothschilds. Nathan Rothschild. Yeah, exactly. Nathan Rothschild. Do you know about what he did? 1920. No, 1815. Eight, look, during the Napoleonic Wars, which was later on in the 1900s, Nathan and his brother, his father hooked him up. His, Nathan and his brother, Nathan was in charge of the British, uh, British economy. And his brother, I forgot his name, uh, not Amshel, I forgot his brother, but he was the head of France's money. Mm -hmm. And so they colluded into putting out this misinformation that Nathan said, well, let's tell all of our sh brokers that the, the France is winning the war. They're kicking our ass. We better, we better cash out our um, bonds because they're going to be worth nothing in a minute. So when he did that, he put that out. He sold his. So people could say, well, are you doing it? Yeah, I did it myself. And then all of his constituents sold all of their bonds, causing the, the British economy to crash. That night, he bought it all back for himself, and then came out the next day and said, oh, my bad, uh, we were actually winning. We're, we're beating Napoleon. Mm. So then what do people do? Oh, well, I need to get my shares back. So they bought back, but they had to buy it from him. Mm. So he not, not only did he have all control of the shares, he also had a crazy increase in come up. And that allowed the Rothschilds to be controllers of the Bank of England. So this is a tactic that CEOs are using today. Uh, Ru Rupert Murdoch, today, or was it yesterday? Today, he came out and said that uh, cryptocurrency is a bubble. He's a mega billionaire. But what is he doing on the low? All of these CEOs are saying it's not worth nothing. And then, like Mark Cuban, they come back a, a short time later and say, yo, it's, it's, it's good. You should, you should do it. Because they already positioned themselves. Okay? They're trying to get us to say, ah, I don't want to hear about it. All right, it ain't real because you said it, literal thinker, literal thinker, because you said it, I'll believe you. I'm not going to do my own research. And while I'm doing this, turning my attention elsewhere, you making money. You're investing, and then you're in a position where I could have been. Okay? This is the game of financial literacy that we're not privy to, that we are now. Absolutely. Amazon, PayPal, these are other places that are accepting cryptocurrency. So again, what is cryptocurrency? Let's talk about the differences. Let's just go small. Say you got a savings account. You got $10 in there. You got $10 in there today. It'll be $10 there next week. It'll be $10 there next month. Maybe it'll be $8 because they're going to charge you a maintenance monthly fee. Okay, they're going to take your money. That money's never going to grow. Never gonna go unless you put money in, right? Whereas, and you'll get penalized if you don't keep a certain amount, wow. right? Huh. Right? You need to have a thousand. Why ain't got a thousand? Well, we'll just take five dollars. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So cryptocurrency, 
if you have that same ten dollars invested in cryptocurrency, and say for instance, uh, it goes up ten percent, so does that ten ten dollars? Say it goes up a thousand percent, so does that ten dollars? Mm -hmm. To put it in practical terms, I invested last March seventy about seventy five dollars in two currencies, and walked away. I didn't I didn't know about it. I was intimidated. I didn't want to. I just uh, you said do it. My boy told me to do it. I said I'll do it. I didn't, I didn't know anything about it, and I was working, again, cushiony job, I'm, I'm getting paid here, so all right, I'll just do that, I'll $50, whatever. Mm -hmm. June of this year, five figures. Mm -hmm. and one, not even a, well, a year and two months. It went from $75 to five figures. Mm -hmm. Wow. And to make it real for myself, and I'm not trying to, I'm not splurging, but I was skeptical about, well, is it really real? Can I use it? I needed to buy a car, I bought a car with it. Mm -hmm. So it's very real, very real, okay? And I can tell you about the credit game, we'll talk about that, how you can use cryptocurrency in one of my classes, but we'll come back to that. But the point is, is that the value increases. It's, a, it's like stock, it's a volatile uh, uh, exchange. It can go up and it can go down. But if you think about it, if you really watch stocks, they're always going up, but just not a straight shoot. It's kind of like go down if it goes, but every low is a new high. Yeah. So it's, it's continually going higher and higher and higher, okay? And when you look at, as I said, if you look at the market of these coins, some of these coins, a coin that I invested in, one of the coins I invested in was $12 last year, and it reached $400. Mm -hmm. Well, if you put in like $1,000 of that, you sit pretty good. Or if you put in $50, you have made a return. The point is, is you don't have to have a lot of money to participate. You can build your money to get to that point. Just take the proceeds and invest it into something else. Be current about what's in the market and then know where to put your money because this is what they're doing. This is how they're making this money. It's easy. It's easy. Cryptocurrency versus stock and gold. Fang, Fang stocks is like Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. These are the top four uh, corporations on the market that make the most money. They've had crazy returns in this last five years. Amazon is up 342%, Netflix over 1,000, uh, Google 148%, but none of them have had the same kind of come up in the last five years as Bitcoin, 22,000%, okay? Gold is down 29.66%. And in fact, June of this year, Bitcoin surpassed it as more valuable a fictitious thing. Something that you can't see, touch, taste, or smell has more value than the actual gold. Mm. This is where it's going. Why? Because where do people put their value? That's what validates something, is where they put their value. Their value, they said, well, you know, gold is gold, but this is something better. Okay, so that's where the attention is going now. Uh, Bitcoin, the first four-figure coin. It's the first four-figure coin, meaning it's the first one to reach the thousands in value. All the other coins, are still under 500. That's how early it is, y'all. It's early. Early. Thousands. 16 million. No, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, you're right, because the, the market cap, I'm sorry. Let me go back. Let me go back. Yeah, that's not what I'm asking, though. What are you asking? There's over, well, I saw that there's 1,221 Cryptocurrencies, different the no, different no, no. kinds of coins. It's, okay. it's it's the difference between market cap and the actual coin. All I'm saying is there's 60 million coins in circulation. Yeah. With the six thousand dollar price, that means there's 172 um, um, right. billion dollar market cap. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. But in the value of different coins, there's over a thousand. So you saying that big, so you saying that Bitcoin is, is the greatest of the different. It's the first, and it's the granddaddy. It's the highest. Oh, it's the most. Okay. It's the one that's driving everything else up. It's pulling oh. everybody else up. It's the big brother. It's, big, it's, the, it's big mama. <laughs> it's big mama. Okay? Gotta give it, gotta give it a female connotation. Okay? Um, let me go back to... So... Yeah. So, March... In March of this year, they predicted that Bitcoin was going to reach 6,000. Well, they reached it already in October. So they were ahead of, ahead of schedule. 2018, they're saying it could be between 17 to 18,000, which is triple its value of today. So I'm not saying you got to put in 
to have one coin, six thousand dollars, you could put in fifty dollars, and you will you will share the same kind of increase of rate as anyone else. It's just a matter of the more you put in, the more you get. You still still have the same percentage of income of, of um, increase. Okay, um, and this is just one coin. Again, this is just one coin. All the other ones are still the highest ones are like there's not even another one that's at four hundred yet. The Ethereum, which is another, this is supposed to be. The, the, the first child of Bitcoin, if you look at it in its timeline of life, Bitcoin in its first five years and where Ethereum is in its first five years, Ethereum is higher. It's, it's much more bigger than Bitcoin. I'll talk about Ethereum in a second. So Bitcoin is growth. They curve, they predict in a, in a few months, this is what's called a, a curve, a bull curve. Mm -hmm. They predict this to go to the 10,000 mark, the five figure mark uh, in a few months. A few months. Okay? This is what's happening. It's happening because businesses are going to start offering it. People start offering it, they start using it. When they start using it, they start investing in it. When they start investing in it, the value goes up. It's that simple. The altcoin growth. Altcoins have experienced a steady up growth, providing additional opportunities. So these are just a few of the top ones. Just like the apps, the mobile apps, and all these different, it's the same scenario. These all have different properties, but it's all value, it's all money. And they do different things, different services. <clears throat> there, is a mul there are multiple ways to invest in cryptocurrency in that space. There's investing, there's mining, there's digital currency ATMs. Which are already here. What are those? They're all over the place. Think about it. When you go to the ATM outside of your bank, what do they do? We're going to surcharge you $3 oh, yeah. and put it in, right? If you have a digital currency, you can put any any amount, 20%. Some people are doing 20% for an exchange. And what it is is basically if you have cash and you want to turn it into a cryptocurrency, you deposit it and it puts it into your wallet. And, to, and I'll, I know, I'll show you the particulars. I know I'm saying things, you're like, well, how does that happen? But basically, it transfers the money to your digital wallet. If you want to pull out, say you want to, I need $20. Uh, you go to your digital currency, you go to the ATM, and you pull out, you want to pull out $20 worth of Bitcoin to turn it into USD. It pulls it from your digital currency, converts it to USD. If you're in Africa, if you're in Kemet, and you want to get pounds, it'll give it to you in pounds. If you're in Costa Rica and you want colonists, it'll give you colonists. If you're in, you know, wherever you are in the world, it converts to any monetary value. It's a global bank. And there's no third party sticking you in the end with a transaction fee. Mm -hmm. and, the, and they're already here, the Bitcoin ATMs. They're already here. They're already all You're around You're going to see here. there's bodegas that have, a, I have a picture of some signs I saw the other day in Queens. We sell Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Or you can purchase with Bitcoin. Wow. Or you can Bitcoin ATM. Yeah. I'll talk what about that in a second. Transaction fees got to be sky high though. It oh. could be whatever they want. Some are low. Because they understand that the market isn't ready for it. But at any point, some people have ATMs in their house. Oh, I wouldn't do it. But some people have it in their home. Well, that's the I'm so, thank you for bringing up. They only add the like value to the money, like in terms of like what people want and need in contrast to how it is it's just a uh, piece of paper. Absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up because I meant to tell you this that uh when you're just printing something that has of no value, the, the difference between what makes Bitcoin a value because it has a cap, there's a certain amount. So there's a cutoff, there's a point where there'll be no more Bitcoin. Now imagine this, imagine you're a painter and you make nothing but one of kinds. And then you're a painter and you make copies, right? Well, if you make copies, then you know, you won't be able to sell it at whatever price you want because somebody else can get it somewhere else. But if you're making one of a kind, you can name your price. So at a point where a coin meets its market cap, meaning it's not produced anymore, whoever has them, if they want to sell it, they can sell it for whatever price they want it to be. But you can't do that with fiat currency because it has no value. So that's the other caveat of having digital currency is that it, it, it ages well. It's just like wine. It's like vintage cars. It's like paintings. It will become something that people will want to pay a lot of money for if you have one. If you, and I would say you could sell it or you could hold it. Hold it for three generations. And let your grandkids or great-grandkids cash out on it. Okay? 
Let's have that vision. We don't have to have all of it now. <clears throat> you can also lend and you can also trade. And I'll show you all those type of things. Um, all coins, one of, the, one of the best all coins is Ethereum. And that's one of the coins I love. The difference about all coin, uh, of Ethereum and Bitcoin is that Ethereum is the first coin that offers what's called smart contracts. Smart contracts is basically an algorithmic code that a binding contract from the beginning. So like for instance, you want to buy a house. And you go to real estate brokers, you the broker in the bank. And day one is this price. But day closing, it's a different price because they changed some of, they added this, whatever. And if you want the house, you want to pay for it. Right? Smart contracts in digital currency is if today it is said 10,000 is this project, no one can come in here and manipulate. There's no third party, there's no lawyer. It's all algorithmic, it's in the code. So no one can go in and alter this contract. So what it is today is what it is in the end. So imagine that for all types of contracts from like a, a car deal or an artist deal or you know any kind of transaction that usually would need a legal third party. You can cut them out, cut out the legal fees. It's written in the code. Record deal. Exactly. I can't go in and change the code. If I change the code, the deal is done. It's null. So this is the beauty of what Ethereum offers. Um, why Ethereum? Um, it's, as I mentioned, it is growing faster than what Bitcoin was in its first five. It was founded in 2014. So in its first three years, it's grown faster than Bitcoin. This is going to take over Bitcoin. And I'm saying, I'm not saying do one or the other. I'm saying do them all. Right. Put a little bit here, there, 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 sprinkle it, and grow on all of them. I always have this illusion of, or this painting of my, when it comes to wealth, as you see, you have an oven, a stove, and you have four eyes, and you got four pots cooking. I want like 10 of those. <laughs> so it's enough for us to eat. Something, something's always boiling. Something always, something about to get ready to eat. We're gonna live off of that. So like the old saying, don't put it all your eggs, eggs in one basket. Right. Exactly. Invest them in multiple baskets. In fact, yeah, don't make one big one. Make multiple little ones. Mm. Okay. That's what they call diversifying. Diversifying. Yes, diversifying. Okay. Mm. Yep. Exactly. You know. Uh, <laughs> so as mentioned, uh, if in June it hit 400. Now, right now, it's under 300, which is a buyer's market. For people that invested, and that's the thing, too, is I've learned that people that have invested in currencies and say it was at this point that went down, they're cashing out, they're not understanding the game. You got to hold. Hold. Exactly. Hold. Because you have people that are cashing out because it dipped $50. Think of it where it was. Look at the charts and see where was it last year this time. Understand it from a yearly or even a six month perspective, not a daily or a weekly. Look at it from a long perspective and project where it's going and see that it's best to hold. Mm -hmm. Write it out. Even put a little bit more in. Put five. We spend $100 a week on stuff we don't need. So if you do that every week, okay, I'll, I'll even make it more practical. $25 a week that we spend frivolously a week. Mm -hmm. A month, that's $100. Take half of that and invest in crypto. So two weeks. Go ahead and do what you usually do, but those other two weeks, invest that in your future, your immediate future. This is the things that I advise folks because we think we don't have the money or we think we don't have enough or we think we don't have the smarts. We do have all of those things and know, you might not know it, but we know somebody that does. So there is no excuse for you not to participate if you want to survive. Because this really is about survival. These jobs ain't here no more. And Social Security will not be here. And a recession is doomed to come. So whatever you got may be taken. Just understand that. I'm not trying to push you, but this is reality. So another piece is mining. And this is my baby. I love this one because, you know, we think of a miner. You think of the guy with the axe and he's a pick and he's, you know, mining for gold. Same scenario in crypto investments and mining is that we're producing the currency. Now, what does that mean? When you go to the to go to dinner tonight, say you go out to dinner, you take your family out to dinner, and you're gonna pay for it with your debit or credit card. When you swipe that card, there's a relationship that happens. There's something that happens behind closed doors that we don't know. It happens in seconds. The the merchant 
conversions with your bank to validate that the funds are there. Mm -hmm. Are the money is the money here? Can I take it out? Yes, it is. Okay, boom, you can take it out. And then you get your card back. There is a payout for that transaction to a third party. Mm -hmm. We don't know what that is. It could be in our taxes. It could be in you know whatever it is. But they get a percentage of that. Imagine that for every transaction that's happening throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So they make it you know, ten dollars or ten cents here, but add that up continuously. Everybody every day. That's making so much money, yielding so much profit. Mining is the same way, but in cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? You have what's called a rig, a computer. This computer is connected to the blockchain. The blockchain is the super highway of transactions where every transaction that happens is here. Mm -hmm. If you can imagine yourself inside of a phone booth and you turn the air on and all these dollars is coming out, you're just grabbing the dollars and putting them in your pocket. And you're, the, 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 the symbolic gesture of putting them in your pocket is you completing the transaction and you get payout for it. So that rig or that machine or that miner is taking transactions, completing them, and getting a payout in whatever altcoin that you're investing in or mining in. So that payment now accumulates and it has value because the, the rate has value, the currency has value. So if you mine like two coins worth in a month, if the currency jumps up 100%, so does what you mined. So now what you've created is a paycheck for yourself. I say that mining to me is the African Susu 2.0. Because if you think about how Susu works, and most people do them wrong, they take the money out, reinvest it. Don't take the cash, put it back in and circulate it again and build something so that as a community you can get something bigger, right? That's the concept. But with mining, because the value grows and you're reinvesting the value, if you are a community and you all go in and get a miner or a mine, because you know it, it's, it's pretty expensive to get one. We build it myself and my partners. But once you have one, the return on investment is five, six months. So after the six month, what you paid in, everything else is, is paid for, and everything else is residual, it's, it's um, cake. It's basically all profit. But the point I'm saying is, mines can eliminate organizations' needs for grant writing, for crowdfunding, for, for all types of things that you, re you rely on outside community fundraisers, because we know we got $10, and well, we're going to give you two. Because I ain't got it, you say. We don't are not fully invested. So rather than go through the painstaking idea of, I got to ask my community to help fund an idea of mine, I'm going to fund it myself. I don't got to ask nobody to give me any money. And I ain't got to hear your mouth about what to do with the money. Because that's what grant writers do. So this is the situation that uh, mining offers, is that not only can you, because one of my services that I offer, I'm going to plug it. <laughs> but one of my offers that I, uh, things that I offer is everybody has a number. Everybody has a monthly number they got to achieve, an uh, expense number. What is that number of all your expenses every month? Now, how do you achieve that number? You work, right? Some of them, some, some jobs don't pay you to read that, meet that number, so you got to pull it from something else. You got to do some hair. You got to, you know, cut some hair. You got to do whatever, wash and call. Whatever you got to do, you know, to meet that number, because that number does not, it's there. It's not going away. <laughs> So I show you how you can meet that number with cryptocurrency through investing and then get you to, to the point where now you are mining to the point where you are bringing in enough money that you can leave your job because this is paying you more than what your job is and it has a future of exponential dividends. Because what your job is paying is only gonna be with this, you're never gonna get no more. I work for the NBA and this is a multi-billion dollar company and I couldn't break six figures. Mm -hmm. And they gave me a two, a 1.2% raise for 12 years, okay? And they had the audacity to cut their employees from 3,000 3, to 1,500. Mm -hmm. So you're doing their jobs and still getting paid less. Mm -hmm. But this is the way corporate America is. This is the way the, all, all the other businesses are. If they're gonna stand in, the, in America, they're going to pay you less, work you harder, they're going to outsource them, so then you really can't get a job. At, at, at to some point, you won't be able to get a job. And the jobs you will get will be like, you know, flipping burgers or whatever. Something minimal that you're not invested in. You're not going to put your heart into it. So you'll quit it and try to find another job. So you'll be more unemployed than employed. Unemployment is a joke because I filed an unemployment when I was laid off. The same money that I got 
this period was the same money I got 15 years ago when I was unemployed, but the cost of living has gone up exponentially. So it's a game where you it's not made for you to win. And we need to stop playing that game. Quit that game and do something different. Build something to get you to the point where you can totally turn your back to it. Because not only us, the rest of the world is doing it, and we can't be the last ones again to do it. Okay? <clears throat> what is mining? So, a rig, a miner. Uh, I have a few mines myself. I've been mining since, since May. And uh, again, I'm a nerd now because I didn't even know how to build computers. But now I know how to build computers. I know how to wow. you know, connect to this and, and, and bring in a currency and I'm on the path of, of reaching my number in three months. Okay, it may take some time if you don't have a lot to put in, but the point is, I'm on schedule. I have a schedule. I know where, I know where my, my, my jump off is. I know where, I see the tunnel, the light. I see it. And that's the thing, a lot of us don't have that plan of when will I get to the point where I break even? Years go by, we never plan it because we don't have financial literacy, okay? So, <laughs> I'm pointing to one rig, all right? This is a rig in Sweden. Sweden, this is a rig facility in Sweden. This is one rig. One row is six across and six down. So each column is 36 rigs. Let's do some math. If you're rigging, if you're mining, so it's, it's you know like how you have um, hard drives, megahertz, te tetrahertz, gigabytes, I mean better high, gigabyte, uh, <laughs> megabytes, well kilobytes first. Mm. Kilobytes, you have megabytes, gigabytes, gigabyte. tetrabytes, okay? You guys got that with hard drive space. The same thing in mining is hash though, it's hash rate, it's power, okay? So you have uh, megahertz, gigahertz, uh, and, um, Tetrahertz, okay? So if you are mining, if one rig can get you anywhere between $300 to $800 a month in production, and that's at the current value. One rig? One rig. One full rig, which is consisted of five GPUs, uh, computer, uh, basically computer cards. The graphic cards were used to first make, they use them for kids to play uh, video games and stream TV, uh, stream movies on it. People have taken these same video cards and now they're mining with it. Okay, so you can make with one rig anywhere between three hundred to eight hundred dollars, depending on the rate of the currency now. So Ethereum is one of the things I'm, I'm mining. It's just under three hundred dollars. So that's what I'm pulling out anywhere between three to three to eight hundred a month. If you're in the tetra height, a tetrahertz, you're pulling in five figures. This right facility right here is pulling in millions a month. Millions a month. Okay, so oh, so mining is like I said, is when when you do a transaction, and in order for that transaction to be validated, mm -hmm. my miner validates that contract or that transaction rather, and then after the transaction, I get paid a percentage of that. Mm -hmm. So just the same thing as you go to dinner and use your card, mm -hmm. and uh, that back end transaction between the bank and the, and the uh, restaurant. There's usually a computer system, which is the bank, that's going to get a percentage of that payment. So, so I'm the bank as a miner. Right, so who decides what comes to you as opposed to other miners? Very good question. So you're part of a pool. Okay. This pool basically is shared. And, you're, and the thing about it is I don't see my mind go, oh, there's one. I grab it. It's just running. It's a computer running. I don't have to go in there and touch anything. I just turn it on and walk away. But I don't know how and what order that I receive stuff, but I do know that as more trans transactions happen, the more tickets that need to be validated. So if I soup up my computer, I'm viable to get more of those transactions. If you got a lower model, you're gonna get yours, but you're gonna get the you know the lower the the, 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 the crumbs that fall on the floor, so to speak. But if you're powerful enough, you're dominating. You're getting like the majority of those transactions. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I, I would love to get there, but I don't have to. Because, again, I know what my number is a month. That's what I'm trying to get to. I'd love to be a millionaire, but let me get to sustainability first. Mm -hmm. See, we think big, and if we can't get there, oh, it ain't going to work. Let's get here first where we're like, you know what? I don't have to work. I'm, I'm good. My food, my house, 
Everything's my insurance, everything is taken care of. Then we can strategize on how we get here. But we gotta get that first. That's my that's what my plan is. Um, and so the synopsis in closing is change is universally inevitable. I'm gonna read this because I actually was writing this this morning. <clears throat> we are witnessing the early stages of it. What we will have to show for it, what, what we have to show for it, just as consumers. Again, we are traditionally the consumer. We're not the producer. We think, well, yeah, Bitcoin is dope. I can spend money. I can buy this, da, da, da. Yeah, but are you making any money? Have you thought about that? Because somebody is. So why not you? First, we had the photographs, then digital pictures. We no longer use photo albums and Polaroids. If we think paper money is the future of the world, it's the same as holding on to those Polaroids. It's old. It's not going to work. It's new. Something new is in place. This thing is decaying. So you might as well position yourself because you're going to participate in one way or the other. But in this situation, you have a chance to participate as a producer. Okay? The current, the currency monetary, the current monetary system is rigged for sub mediocrity. You can't build wealth and sustainability via Social Security, 401k, CDs, and bonds. And they may be gone over the next few decades. So, if you, oh, I meant to tell you that. So, I had three $50 CD bonds. Right? They were eight years old. So I'm doing my, as I'm doing my diligence and learning about financial literacy and learning what money is for the first time at over 40 years old, 47 to be exact, I was like, I got three CDs that's been sitting here, or three bonds rather, that's been sitting here for eight years. They gotta be worth something, right? Mm -hmm. So I go to the bank and I ask them, tell me the value. What has it accrued in eight years? $1.60. Whoa. Oh, yeah. $1.60. Mm -hmm. $50. $50 CD bonds, it was $150 total, and only accrued $1.60. Wow. It was worth half first at the top, it's 75. But then, and I had another 18 years worth to mature. So I only got $1.60 out of the eight years. So I said, <laughs> give me that. <laughs> Cashed it out, put it in cryptocurrency, and in two weeks I tripled it. Wow. Tripled. So here's the thing, the old system, it, does, it's not, it was never designed. It was designed to make, the, what do the banks do? When you put money in their account, they make money. what do they do? They take it immediately. They take it immediately and invest in their endeavors. They make 12%. Yes, and what do they give you? A maintenance fee. All right, so cryptocurrency will render banks and fiat obsolete while offering global prosperity. This is gonna help the world. This is the thing, like, because I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm, a, you know, I'm against global white supremacy. Conspiracy I'm realist. A realist, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm Pan African to the core. I love my people unconditionally, first and always. But this gives me some comfort to know that you don't have to be a conspiracy nut to be to participate in this, because everybody's going to benefit from it. The ones that are going to benefit benefit from it are the one percent of the one percent. We're going to transition that power back to the people. Okay. There's a need, a very strong need, to get more black folk involved as makers and not just users of crypto. You guys know something that 99% of us don't know, ain't talking about, haven't even fathomed yet. That's how early it is, and that's how special it is, and that's how responsible it is for you to do something with what you know. Whether you participate or not, tell somebody. Okay. Others are using crypto to address personal and communal needs. We have the same early entry level participation, participatory opportunity. Meaning, there's, you, if you get on social media, you're gonna see all these, you're starting to see cryptocurrency, Bitcoin mainly, conferences. All these, and there's one happening in New York City. Uh, exactly, you see the ticket price? $500. And, and guess what they go do with that? That's the low ticket. Yeah, the middle ticket is 900 it's, it's and the VIP ticket is over G. Yep. Yeah. But that's the point. Listen, look at this. So look at this from a look at this from a business perspective, right? As a business owner, like this bookstore, if you decide to collect payments from digital currency, if I buy a book from here that's ten dollars, it's no longer ten dollars. It's gonna jump with the currency. So now I can exponentially grow my wealth in my business because I'm taking it, whether you take it and receive it or you take it and turn it into it yourself because I still don't know how to do it yet. 
and I'm going to be talking to you guys about that, is you accept cryptocurrency as a payment, and every payment you have, you put it into the crypto space, crypto space, and you will see it grow over time, not even over long time, short term. So now it has value. Same thing with you as a person. When you get paid by your job, and they say pay yourself first, pay yourself first by putting it into cryptocurrency. Take a percentage. I'm not saying put all of it. So you feel comfortable enough to do it, but take a percentage of that, put it into the crypto space, and watch it grow in a matter of weeks. You will, you will understand the value of money totally different now. And you'll be like, whoa, that's a quarter? Let me put that in. <laughs> whatever you find. Well, loose change? Like, like you will put whatever you find in that sphere because you know that it grows. It grows. Yes. So wait, how exactly do you put it in there? Like it's like a website or is it like Yes. There is a, it's, it's, it's two, it's, it's multiple ways. The main way is a online wallet. And I can show you guys how to do that. Um, it's a link you go to, you set up a wallet, and then it, you connect your account, and then basically um, you can do a deposit from there. Then they have, the other way is ATMs. Once you have your crypto wallet address, you can go to an ATM and put in cash, and it goes to your account, to your wallet. So you have to save your crypto wallet. It is a fake. You don't have to, you don't have to connect it to a crypto, to a bank account. If you want to remain, remain anonymous, then just set up the account and then connect. Well, you can connect the credit card. No. Eh. Yes. Yes, you can connect the credit card. Yes, you can do the credit card, but you don't have to have a bank account. You can basically put it into, um, just do it as a, a cash deposit. Once you've got your wallet number, you can put it in any way, through credit, uh, debit, savings, or straight cash. Okay, and I, I can show you guys how to do that. Um, let me finish this real quick. There's a need to get more black folk involved, right? Others are using cryptocurrency to, to handle their issues. They're, you know, revitalizing their communities. Uh, they're handling the issues. If they need a hospital, they use crypto to buy it. They need to buy uh, land. They need to buy a block. They're doing it through cryptocurrency. We can do the same thing for ourselves and galvanize and address the issues that we have and stop having our hands up and hands out asking for people to give us and treat us equally. Excuse my language and fuck them. Let's get it ourselves. Yeah, it it's here. We don't have to ask nobody for nothing. That's right. Okay? If you think about it, a good example, Uber and Lyft mm -hmm. addressed one of the issues that black men had is getting a taxi. Well, that issue became obsolete when you got Uber and Lyft. Taxi, now you, I don't need a taxi. I get Uber. So this is how technology finds innovative ways to address some of our social injustice issues. Mm -hmm. Not to say they were founded because of that, but people that have realized they can use it for that. Exactly, get around. Uh, now, how can I participate and learn more? Um, I've been doing this since May, and uh, I really feel like I, I'm probably in my sophomore, junior year in college. The type of stuff that I've been exposed to that I said, I can't sit on this. I got to get it out because it's not going to help us if I'm just keeping it to myself. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I understood that it's an opportunity, there's a window right now where there's going to be a lot of misinformation put out. Okay, we always talked about the CEOs and saying don't buy it, it, but there's a lot of information that's going to come out, there's going to be a lot of schemes coming out as well. Mm -hmm. Now we all know MLMs, right? Mm -hmm. Most level marketing. Mm -hmm. We all have don't have good experiences with MLMs, right? Some people are now associating this with MLMs, and I'm like, no, that's wrong. If you tell somebody, especially us, we get turned off, we don't want to hear about this thing, because we think it's MLMs. It's not. There's a lot of information. You can't be that literal thinker. You gotta do your own research. But in doing that, what I've done here, and I have to blow it up, but I'm offering two level tier participatory packages, right? Very inexpensive. For ten thousand dollars, like I'm playing, for, for thirty dollars, for thirty dollars, I will get your account set up, show you what accounts to uh, to invest in, set up your wallet, and you'll be up and running for thirty dollars. And you'll be part of my list serve, where I put out information about what's going on, and I'll tell you the things that I'm doing and share it with you. Level two, one second, brother. Level two is at a deeper level for $99 plus four hours consultation post, personal one-on-one, -on -one, is I will show you the tactics that 
I'm learning and I'm still learning. There's things I, I've learned so much just this week alone. But what I'm trying to do is I am trying to support myself, but at the same time, I want to arm you with something and not tax your pockets for it. Mm -hmm. So my thing is for $99, I could show you also um, the tactics, the, the, the five different taxi, tactics of, of investments. There's, uh, as I said, investing, there's mining, there's uh, digital uh, crypto ATMs, there's lending, and there's trading. In these ways, people are finding ways to create thousands of dollars a month. Now, I'm not saying it's the first month, but what I am saying is it gets you on pace. In addition to that, in this level course, I work with you to find out what your number is. What is your monthly number for your expenses? And we walk backwards on how we can achieve that through crypto. I'll show you what you need to invest in and give you a timeline of where you should reach around what time you should be reaching that number so then you can make the decision of whether you want to quit your job or not. Mm. I'm doing it myself. So if you choose not to do that, perfectly fine. I'm not going to hate you. But I will say, do the diligence. Continue to do the research. Don't just you know, take what anybody says and, and take it for you know, as truth. Do your own diligence. But if you are looking for someone that is in, deeply invested in it, I'm one of those people and I'm trying to do whatever I can to bring up our community to know about it because we're the last to know. Ain't nobody thinking about us. Nobody's thinking about us to tell us this information. The first thing they're going to tell us is to buy. But they're not going to tell you how you can earn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have the ability to consult on a level of buying mining rigs? I mean, I, I'm putting together a couple of rigs myself. Oh, word. Immediately. For you advanced. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah. I'm telling you, like, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we spoke beforehand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I came to this because of the fact that my story is very similar. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I want to participate in, in, in your movement. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also am setting up mining rigs in parallel. Mm -hmm. I'm already in that. So I want to. Talk to you about yeah, absolutely. Rigs. I mean, we yeah, we we offer uh, my partners and I we offer rigs. We sell rigs. Uh, we have two levels. Uh, the first level is three thousand. The second level is six. Based on the current currency rate of Ethereum, your return on investment, meaning what you pay will be paid off. You'll have it, and from there on, you'll be making a profit. Is anywhere between five to six months. Mm -hmm. um, you can't get a return investment any kind of thing like that. Most things you put an investment in, it's going to take years to get your money back. In this case, it's a very short period. And that's with the current rate of the currency. If the currency goes up, which it's predicted to do, so will your return of value, or return ROI, come down. And with those two situations, are you talking megahertz, tetrahertz? I mean, where are the It levels? depends on, on how much you want to invest. Uh, one rig is in the megahertz level. It's, right. it's basically uh, 200... I'm sorry, um, producing in the hash rates. No, I'm sorry. The gigabyte power is five gigabyte, 11 gigabyte cards, so that's 55 gigabytes. That's the, 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 mm -hmm. the software itself, the hardware itself. Right. But the yield in hash rate production is anywhere between that first tier I showed you that gets you anywhere between three to, eight, three to 800. Okay. So if your number, say for instance, your monthly expenses is 20,000, I'm sorry, $2,000 a month. Say, and that's probably a very not realistic yeah. number. Yeah. But say it's $2,000. If you wanted to solely invest in mining to cover that expense, you need two and a half rigs. At that, at that megahertz. Level. At that, but it'll be higher because the more you have, the more powerful it gets. Okay, so okay. So the more powerful, the more rigs you have, the more. And we're we have facilities right now. We're looking for for, for space because remember I showed you that guy that had all this yeah. space. We're looking for something like that right now. So you know we're open to talk to anybody that has space that we can keep you know, cool, cool in the basement yeah. or whatever and run it. And, I okay, I got to tell you this piece. I got to tell you this. Well, I don't trust clouds. I don't, I would not do, I would not do clouds because you're more susceptible to be hacked. If you do a hard wire, you can, you're better off. You know what clouds are like, you know, there are people that put this stuff in the cloud, like their whole entire photo book, their whole life, and they got cut off and they couldn't retrieve any of that data. So I would never put anything in the cloud because someone else can have access to it. That's what I'm saying about us, and nothing against him or anybody like that, but I'm saying that we get into situations that's already saturated. saturated. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Let's do something different. There are not 
there's a few maybe that I know of in one hand and maybe four fingers that are investing heavily or has an invested plan outside of the, their individual selves of a collective movement. This is something that we can pull together as an individual first, because take of ourselves first. But man, when you got money and I got money, what is, what's the scenario they say is, some people raise their money, then they go shopping. Other people go shopping and don't have the money. They just sit there window shopping. They, just, I'm, they I'm dream. I'm looking at investments, not just Bradley, you know. I'm looking at, well, you know, we'll, we'll Absolutely. Well, this is, this is the same kind of scenario because it's an investment that has, you know, it's a, it's a mid to long term. But the other flip side is that you can earn money from it. You can actually, you, I have, I have uh, this, this is my cryptocurrency debit card. So the same debit card you have with a bank, this is connected to my wallet, so I pay for stuff with that. I swipe it and I pay for my groceries. I pay for my, you know, whatever it is, just as I would any debit card, it's connected to my wallet. So this is gonna become normal. Mm -hmm. This is gonna become what everybody, we're already using it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're already in the cast. Yeah, it says Visa. Okay, so Visa is connected to yes. cryptocurrency? Yes. And you pay a fee every time you swipe it? I don't pay a fee because it's cryptocurrency. Okay. Yeah, so I don't Visa pay a fee. Get any I don't know what, what their... What their on it and it don't cost you I know money. when I look at my balance, it's exactly what it is I pay for. Okay. Uh -huh. So do you, do you think that the stock market is going to crash? I'm sorry. It always does. But you say it's planned. Crash. It's planned. Yeah. Well, who, who plans? Media. Media because they have this recession, they got to keep in balance. It's moving out of Venezuela, it's about to come over here. So we got to make shit happen over here. Oh, wow. You had a question? Yeah, yeah. Um, can you speak as a uh, business account? Absolutely. Taxes? Yeah, taxes. So, so, very good question. I'm actually doing a diligence right now. As of yet, I have found where you don't have to pay taxes on it because it's not linked to a, a government. It's a global, it's a global currency. Trump ain't powerful enough. America is one nation. There's many nations that are like, you know what, we're using it. Get used to it. So, yeah, 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 you. Sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I meant to come back to you. I meant to come back to you. Thank you.